Here they are. Actually, I actually picked them outside of the road, I think. I can't remember now. And then I left them outside for a little while. That actually made the finish come off, but they're still, I did none of the joints in the wood separated, which is good. So they're still solid. I left them outside because I just didn't have any place for them. And I was like, oh, if I don't never get to them, I'll just take them to the dump. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip all the fabric off of there, take all the foam off of it. Then I'm gonna take a wire brush, give them a good wire brush to get the finish off. And then I'm gonna bleach them and make them like a, a really light wood, natural. Okay, so taking off the back and this arm legit took about seven minutes. And actually now that I see what this looks like underneath here and how that looks, I think I might even just leave these off. So I'm going to show you regular speed how I'm taking this off. So you can see that there's a bunch of staples here. These are the staples that we're holding the welt on. Um, so I'll pull these out. If there's any loose staples here, these are actually, well, I could probably pull that one out pretty easily, but these staples that are sticking out, you can just twist them right out of there. Easy, easy. And then these staples that are sticking out, you can get a flat bar underneath or a, a flat pliers under there and pry them up. So what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just pry up the ones that are easy and leave them hanging out like that. And then just pull them right out. If they're not easy, then I'll just leave them in and just hammer them down. And then as far as taking off the fabric, this is the what I do. I just get this flat, it's not a screwdriver, it's a um, chisel, that underneath here, and pull the fabric off all the way around. And that works very fast. And I don't really have to worry too much about the wood of the chair because this is in terrible condition and I'm gonna sand all this or what I'm gonna use is a wire brush on this and get this down to the raw wood. I got just about all of the staples pulled out. So the arms are all clean. The sides, I've got enough of the staples pulled out. So now I need to strip off this finish. So I went to the Dollar Tree and bought one of these barbecue grill wire brushes. So I'll hit the whole chair with this wire brush, get in all the cracks and crevices, and then I'll use maybe some of that, these scouring pads. You could use steel wool. I guess that's kind of the same thing as steel wool. So. All right, so I've got almost all the paint stripped off of here. I sanded it down and wire brushed it pretty well. I still have some paint in these dark or in these crevices, but what I'm gonna do now is do a basically a white wash over it. And I'm not using white paint, I'm actually using tan. This is the cheapest craft paint you can get. It's like a buck. I put it into my paint bin and I've got water over here. And now I'm just going to wet brush this whole chair and the idea with this is not dry brushing it where you're just getting a little bit of paint on the high points we are going to work this paint into all these crevices and all this carving so really pounce it so it gets into the cracks and crevices and then we're going to take this washcloth which is a little bit damp i'll even wet it a little bit more and we're going to wipe off a lot of that paint so that it'll just lighten up the wood and stay in those cracks and crevices. How much lighter that is. Now I'll do this bit and this bit. You can build up the layers, so you can just continually go over with another layer to get it to the lightness that you want. So this is the polyurethane or polyacrylic that I use. It's water-based and it's easy to clean up, easy to use. I use the satin, the clear satin finish, which gives such a beautiful velvety finish. This is the fabric that I bought at Joann's. I got it in the clearance section in the back of the store where they have the door busters. And it, they're both velvet, this beige velvet and this blue velvet. And I'm gonna make it difficult on myself and do a racing stripe of this blue velvet down the center of 
the chair back and seat. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the stripe for all four pieces, the two backs and the two seats, all the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this first. One pro tip about velvet is you have to make sure that you run the nap the same on all your pieces. And I want my nap to run like smooth down from the top of the chair to the bottom and then from the back of the seat out the front. So I do the same thing with my beige fabric on either side and the blue fabric. You don't wanna run it sideways for sure. Don't railroad it. So I'm gonna cut my fabric to eight inches so that I get a six inch racing stripe. So I get about a five eighths inch seam allowance on either side. Clearly, you could make this a lot easier on yourself by just doing all one fabric. Okay, so the widest point is 33 inches minus six plus and 33. So if I have a 33 by 33 square. Okay. I just make sure I'm lined up nice and square here. Okay, and this is folded in half, so I can cut right along this fold and I will have my two seats. This is running this way, so this will go to the back of the seat and this will go to the front of the seat. I'm going to cut this in half this way. Because then I'm going to sew my blue racing stripe. Making sure that I'm still. Put that on the outside because it's got the. Running my same way. And then this one. Nope, it needs to go like that. So we're running that the same way. Now I will go ahead and stitch this in here, and then I'll have the bottom seat. So clearly right side to right side. I will line that up and stitch this. Take it to my sewing machine. First of all, I reinforced the seat platform slash deck with a little bit of this webbing, which is not stretchy. So this here what is elastic. When I sat down on this chair before, it felt like the center of the chair was gonna, was like caving in. It almost felt like broken springs kind of. A, so I used this kind of webbing. So now I'm about to install the outside back. This is the right side of the fabric. I'm making sure that my nap is running down as well. And I'm going to staple this inside of the chair. So the next step is just to reinforce the back a little bit with a little bit of more straps. I'm going to do one single cross here. Um, and that's just so that when you're leaning against the back of the chair, it's not just this velvet that's holding the pressure of leaning on the back of the chair. You don't just staple it like that. You actually fold it so that it'll have a little bit more strength. And so I'll pull and just kind of real tight and then just put a couple and then fold it over and go all the way across. So that's a good way to stretch that. Okay, that just reinforces that. Okay, so now we can put our padding back. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mark the middles of all these pieces. So I'm going to fold them in half so that these seam lines are exactly lined up and then clip a little V-notch there. All right, so now we have a V-notch so you can see where the center of these are so we can line everything. So I can take this V and line it right to the center. So I'm going to make sure that these seams are out like so. up 
this notch with the center of the bottom of the chair here. Oh, I put it on upside down. Look at that. Okay, take that off. I want all the nap of my fabric to run down the back of the chair and down the seat like that. Okay, so what I did there is like a, a half staple and I'll show you close what that looks like. Difficult to tell, but that staple is only in halfway. And what I mean by that is I took my staple gun and you put the staple in with the staple gun sideways so that one of the legs of the staple is still sticking up. So that way, if you have to take that staple back out, it's easy to grab a hold of that leg that's sticking up. So I'm placing the fabric on here, tucking it through the back in the center. Bring it down here. I made sure that all my seams are laying out. Okay, now I will cut my relief cuts to go around this. So we've got to put a relief cut right here in the fabric so that we can get this to come around each side of this. straight back towards that piece of wood. Okay. I'll pull this down and we'll see if we did enough. Nope. We need to cut more because that's still like that. Just go little by little, and just a tiny bit more. Looks like it's going to be good, but I'm going to go ahead and do the other side first mm -hmm. before I go any deeper or finalize that.
So I got kind of the crow's foot in there. And I'm gonna go just a tiny bit deeper. And that'll allow this to fold in and these two pieces to go around each side. So I will fold that under. This will be under. This will be under. And so that way we can pull that down. Okay, I'm going to fasten this down. So we need to fasten it inside of this piece of trim there. I'm going to go ahead and do the front and then I'll come to the corner and address that. So this is where we're going to have to go up and around this piece here. So that's where I'm aiming at here. I'm going to do a small V here. And like that, and like that. Okay, nice and tight. Okay. All right, so now it's all stapled. Now I've just got to trim this all off and then we'll do the welt. I really should just use the razor. Okay, there she is. I trimmed everything off and now I'm gonna make welt and then I'll show you how to apply the welt. And this is the point where you could get away with just doing either a trim of gimp cord, or you could use even potentially ribbon, or you could use some welt that's pre-made that they sell at the fabric store.